I'm Jason with Born Handy, and this is part two of my do-it-yourself hutch build. And if you remember from part one, this particular set of hutches is used to add additional storage space to an aquarium setup, but there's no reason these couldn't be used as uh, maybe a nightstand on either side of a bed or any other number of uses that you may have for a hutch. In the previous video, we completed the upper portion for the face frame for this upper shelf, and we assembled the rough end of what's gonna become our tabletop for our lower cabinet. And in this video, we're gonna complete the rough box for the upper shelf unit and the rough box for the lower cabinet. They are a little more involved than just a top and a simple glue up of a board, but this portion is still very beginner friendly. So with a brief intro out of the way, let's get right into the build. I'm gonna be calling out a lot of measurements on pieces that I've already cut down. The PDF cut sheet is set up so that you can build two of these at one time. So if you do intend to build just one of these, it may be to your advantage to just simply copy down the dimensions as I call them out. These are gonna be the sides of the shelf and they are 40 and one quarter inches long and five inches wide at finished length. But our cut sheet left us just a little bit long on 40 and a quarter. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a mark at this time and we'll get this cut to size. And now I have two pieces that are labeled shelf and we're gonna go ahead and cut these shelves to length. These pieces are four and a quarter of an inches wide, and each shelf is gonna be cut down to 16 and a half inches in length. And that gives me four shelves per unit. And I'll do the exact same thing for the piece that's gonna become the top. Now when it comes to the shelves that are gonna be in the center, I actually wanna push the pocket screws as close to the front as I can get within reason. So for that purpose, I'm going to clamp once and drill twice on the A and the B slot with the shelf pretty much lined up with the edge of this insert. These pocket holes are pushed more to the front of the shelf because the shelf is going to have a face frame that extends downward by about two inches and that'll help to conceal the pocket holes and make them invisible fasteners. So now we're back to our shelf sides that we had earlier and one of these is going to receive and become the top of the shelf just like this. And the other one is gonna receive this board here and become the bottom of the shelf, just like this. The pocket holes on the top will be above eye level and concealed, and the pocket holes at the bottom will be sitting on the top of another table, and therefore they'll be concealed as well. We're gonna go ahead and attach those first, and then we'll attach the remaining shelf pieces. Just a little bit of glue on one edge. Make sure that your shelf lines up with the front of the shelf side. There is gonna be a gap in the back. That gap is gonna receive the back of the shelf later on. Because pocket screws can sometimes cause the piece that you're working with to shift a little as the screw goes in, I'm gonna apply some downward pressure as I insert this screw. I'm gonna go ahead and secure the other one the same way. Now in terms of spacing the next shelves out and having them spaced exactly as I want them, I've got a trick that's gonna help me do that. And so I've cut a stick that's 13 and a half inches long. I'm gonna put it in place just like this, and I will glue it and screw it this way. After I've done that, the next shelf is gonna be 11 and 3 quarter inches up, and so I'll do the same thing. I've cut a stick that's 11 and 3 quarter inches long, and it will space out the next shelf. So now that I have all four shelves on one side, I'm gonna flip the component over, and I'm gonna apply them to the other side. All right, so now I'm gonna install the shelf back, and if we've done this right, the shelf back, should fit, albeit a little tight, right into the back of the shelf. And looks like we've done pretty good. We are gonna also want some pocket screws here as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and say I want one here, 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 and here, and here. In addition to that, we are gonna want pocket screws to go from our lower and upper shelf into the top. So I'm gonna put one here, and I'll also make a mental note to put one in the lower shelf as well. And that completes the rough end of our upper shelf unit. Okay, so now I'm ready to assemble the base cabinet. We need to get our top onto the sides in the back. And since there's no real guide on putting our top on, we're gonna use 
the bottom of the cabinet in order to space out the sides and back while we place the top on. So step one, let's install the bottom of the cabinet to the top just temporarily. That ensures the piece didn't shift. I needed the front of the bottom to be exactly aligned with the front of the side. And now I'll place the back panel on. I'm gonna apply a little bit of glue, not applying glue to the bottom. I'm gonna make sure that the top and bottom are aligned as perfectly as possible. And I'm gonna put a screw in the bottom in order to pull the back into place temporarily. Now I'm gonna spin this back around and put a screw in here, paying attention to the spacing. I'm not gonna put a screw here just yet. That'll come in just another second or so. I'm gonna go ahead and lay another bead of glue down this side of the cabinet. Again, putting nothing on the bottom that's gonna to have to be moved in just a moment. Now I'm gonna hold the cabinet and roll it over. Continuing to hold, I'm gonna roll over one more time. Just as before, I'm gonna align the bottom front edge with the front edge of the side cabinet and screw it down. I'll put one more screw in the back. At this point, I'm gonna remove the bottom from the top of the cabinet temporarily. With the bottom unscrewed, I should be able to just simply slide it out. And now I'm gonna place the top onto the work surface and place the cabinet onto the top. Now what I'm looking for is perfect alignment side to side, as well as I want the back of my cabinet sides to be exactly flush with the cabinet back. We're gonna to need to use a combination square for that. And that's gonna do the trick right there. So now that I know that I have perfect alignment, I'm gonna shoot a couple of screws in the back to hold the back in place while applying downward pressure. The next thing I wanna do is get a little bit of glue on this tabletop. Downward pressure and the screw has gone in. Now I'll take my combination square and make sure that there's been no movement. Everything looks to be pretty good. I know this side here is perfectly square, so I'm just gonna use my clamp to pull this other side into square, and then I'll put the screw in while it's clamped down. Now I'll put the remaining two screws in, and the top is now secured to the cabinet. So now before the glue sets up, on the remaining joint, I wanna go ahead and get the bottom of the cabinet aligned. In order to do that, I'm gonna take a piece of the face frame material, which is two inches wide, and I'm gonna line it up exactly with the bottom of the cabinet, just like this. Then I'm gonna take a pin, and I'm gonna make a mark on both sides. So now, I know that my bottom piece needs to align perfectly with these marks. And you'll notice that there are two pocket screws in the back and there are three in the front. That'll become a little bit more apparent when we go to put the face frame on as to the reason why. But for now, let's just go ahead and get this set in place. And all I gotta do is line up the top edge of the bottom with the line that's been made. A clamp to help hold just a little bit of pressure while this gets tapped into position. And now just because I have this aligned, up front does not mean that it's aligned for the rest of the cabinet. So what I'll do is I'll take my combination square and I will set the depth to be exactly aligned with where it is at that point. And then I'll tighten it down. I'll check on this side to make sure we're correct. We are. And now I can go around the rest of the cabinet and tap it into place. One more time just to make sure nothing's moved and I'll put my pocket screws in on the sides. At this point, I can put the two screws in to the back to pull the back of the cabinet flush against the back of the bottom. All that's left to do now is to add the final two pocket screws to the back. And now, our base cabinet rough in is complete. And that's gonna do it for part two. I hope you're enjoying this series, and if you are, a thumbs up and a subscribe goes a long way to keeping me motivated to make new videos. So keep an eye out for part three in the near future. And until next time, this is Jason with Born Handy.